All right, this is it. We're here. It's the tournament everybody's been waiting for, the Forestwood Cup here in Atlanta, Lake Lanier. And I've got with me here the man. And I do mean the man literally, Tom Mann Jr. Uh, Tom Mann, Tom Mann Jr. is a name that's, in my mind, it's synonymous with catching big old spotted bass deep out of Lake Lanier. I can remember being a kid watching the Bassmasters, watching him fish like 30 and 40 foot deep. I didn't even know bass lived that deep. And you can look at his record. I, I went back today and looked at his BASS record. Out of seven or eight bass tournaments that they've ever held here, Tom has six top tens. The FLW in their existence has been here a couple times. He got a second place many years years ago and recently in an FLW series over here had an eighth place and now you got a world championship that's come to your backyard Tom you got to be excited about this well Rob you know uh, it's it's been an amazing thing you know I qualified last October so I've had so long to, to prepare for this tournament and uh, obviously for a tournament you know of this nature this this magnitude the size of the, you know, the money the everything that goes along with it uh, it's been a, a you know a very exciting time for me I'm, I'm glad it's here to be honest I want to just uh, you know put my head down and go fishing and, and, and literally get this thing over with because you know uh, qualifying uh, you know seven or eight months ahead of for one of these things is <laughs> and really not as much fun as you think to be honest because then you really you know everything the wheels get turning you say well what do I need to do I didn't do anything different than I've done in the past or whatever and uh, you know, basically, uh, I have prepared exactly the way I wanted to. I've done everything I could possibly do, you know, uh, from from Lex. I mean, literally, when I got home the week after I, you know, won the Angler of the Year on, on the uh, East last year, and I knew I'd qualify for this tournament, uh, I started preparing the, the week after. And I, I have done everything that it is humanly possible to do to prepare for this tournament. So, you know, this coming week, I'm going to just put my head down and fish hard and uh, leave it up to the Lord. Tom, uh, last year when they announced this tournament here, you won on a tear in the FLW series. You won the points there, and you won, it, what really sticks out in my mind, you won at Clarks Hill. And what's curious to me about that is Clarks Hill is a blue back lake, and we've got this kind of this new creature, relatively new, <laughs> last 10, 12 years in our fisheries up here, and it changes the fishery around a little bit. And kind of what I understand is, you know Lake Lanier really good, but what you really know, it's not so much your little secret spots and stuff, but what you know is this blueback herring and how it's changed fish. What can you tell us about what the blueback has done? Well, uh, in a word, what happens if you have blueback herring, whether they're here or Lake Hartwell, where we're going next year on the tour, um, you know, or Clarks Hill, like you said, the key word for blueback is, is uh, suspend. And what, that, what I mean by that, blueback herring, when the water warms up, uh, blueback is a saltwater minnow. He likes warm. He likes it to be really warm and even hot, actually. And they will start rising to the surface in midday. They start roaming around. Well, the fish, you know, after a, a period of time, and you get enough bluebacks in the lake, they, uh, you know, they just know that, and uh, they start suspending on spots and wait for those big schools of bluebacks to come over. The, you know, and they just start attacking them. And that's kind of the way you you have to uh, approach a, a lake that has blueback herring in it. Uh, it's it's a it makes it tends to make the fish school more. Okay. Um, you know, I, you know. I hope I understand them good enough. <laughs> One more week. <laughs> but uh, you know, I caught those fish at Clark's Hill last year. All of them were suspended. You know, I drew all those fish up to the surface. Uh, although they were in, uh, most of them were in 20 to 30 feet of water. Uh, you know, I drew them up to hit a surface bait. You know, I caught them all on a on a double fluke rig. So. Uh, you know, even in the hot summertime, and the surface temperature out here on Lanier right now uh, is 90 degrees. So, I mean, it's really hot. Okay. But you can still draw those fish up. Uh, if, you know, if you understand the bluebacks, you kind of understand where, where, where bass live and they set up. You know, uh, you, the good thing about this tournament is, I mean, guys that want to fish on the bottom can catch them. There are plenty of fish on the bottom. There are plenty of fish that you can draw up to the surface and there's also the guys that, that run way up the rivers that want to fish shallow you know they're going to catch them also it's a tremendous bass fishery but uh you know blueback has it's changed the the fishing for sure i mean you know you we used to dink little worms around right, you right. know 30 and 40 feet deep and right. hope we caught five bass that weighed seven pounds and this and that whatever <laughs> I remember those well those years are certainly over with right. uh you know we got big fat fish in here now and uh it changed everything they bite big baits now you don't have to dink those little worms around. You know, there's all kinds of uh, series of baits they bite, and they're all big. 
Uh, bluebacks here average uh, four to six inches long. You know, it's a just a really a perfect bass bait. Uh, but they do tend to swim around the surface. I mean, uh, even when it gets really hot, uh, if you've got a good, good blueback population, they'll tend to, to kind of be around the surface all the time. Those fish know that. They set up on places. They suspend. They're looking up all the time. You know, and that's kind of the deal. Tom, uh, if you were to win this, this tournament here this week, you, you've contributed a lot to the body of knowledge of, of, of spotted bass fishing. Uh, you've, been, you've been fishing the Pro Tour many, many years. If you were to win... Would you keep fishing or would you, or, or would this be, I mean, would, would you kind of hang it up now? And, and uh, you know, you said something about maybe moving to Okeechobee. I mean, well, what's in the future for Tom Mann Jr.? Well, you know, uh, I, I certainly would not quit fishing. I'm, I'm, you know, I try to keep myself physically fit. I'm in pretty good shape. I'm going to fish as long as I phys you know, physically can, uh, you know, or the sponsorship runs out or whatever happens. But <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not dreaming about uh, retirement. Obviously, okay. $600,000 would, would add to anybody's retirement. I mean, I don't care who you are. If you're a fisherman, $600,000 is a lot of money. <laughs> And it would certainly help. And, uh, you know, who knows, two years down the road, three years down the road, if, you know, things go south and I don't fish good and things happen, you know, uh, you may see me down there in South Florida. But <laughs> I'm not thinking about that. You okay. know, right now I'm just totally focused on uh, trying to do the best I can in this tournament. Um, you know, this is a dream come true for me, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I really just put praise out to the state of Georgia, Governor Purdue, FLW, uh, Gwinnett County, all the people for putting this thing together because it takes a tremendous amount of work to do it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have to spend a lot of money and so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, uh, it's just a, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity. That's the best way I can say it for me. Uh, my, this is the culmination of my whole career. You know, I've been fishing full time for 26 years. This okay. is all I've done. And, uh, you know, to have an event like this on a place where you fish for 40 years, um, you know, Obviously, I'm going to have, I, I would just say, a slight advantage because, you know, these, you know, as you know, these guys are really good. I mean, this is the best. They really are. And they've done all their homework. They were here pre-fishing. They spent, you know, six, seven, eight days. Everybody did. I saw them out there. Uh, and I expect them, all, you know, to, to catch them. I'm going to have just a little advantage just because of the knowledge, I, you know, years and years and years. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to run out of fishing spots. Right. You know, I'm going to keep going and going. And uh, tough as it is right now, it's a little tougher on the near than it should be, to be honest. It's, it's not as good as I, I really hoped it would be because I wanted to showcase this tremendous spotted bass fishery we have. But it is a little down. I mean, we have had a tremendously hot summer, you know, all over the country, but it has been miserable here. We had in June, we had 17 days over 95 degree weather. And, uh, you know, we've had leading up to this tournament, it's been 95 plus every day. And the tournament's going to be all, all leading up to the tournament, almost 100 degrees. So, you know, that just don't make for good bass fishing. I don't care where you're at. But still, I think you're going to see that we, we do have what I think is the best spotted bass fishery in the world. And I think we'll see that this week. You know, there'll be some really good quality fish caught. And even as tough as it is in the dog days of the middle of summer like this in the southeast, I think we came to the best spot we could come. Folks, the best spotted bass fishery in the world. You'll have the best man after them next few days here at Lake Lanier, Forest Wood Cup. Tom, thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Rob.